Hey girl, are your healthy habits all over the place or non-existent? Do you wish you could find true food freedom, move your body for joy, and really just talk a little nicer to yourself? If you have tried to have it hack your health, but the strategies you've tried just haven't worked for you in your busy lifestyle, then this podcast is for you. Hey, I'm Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach, behavior change specialist, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I'm here to tell you there is an easier way than what we've been taught about our health and our habits. How do I know? Well, because I've transformed my own life through habit hacking and now my family gets the best of me and I now help my clients do the same. I'm now going to teach you how to create healthy habits and less time guilt-free for all seasons of your life. It's not your fault your habits haven't worked, my friend. We just have to do them differently. So are you ready to feel empowered and transform your habits and life? Then let's do this. You're listening to episode 202 of Self Transformed. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. I hope you are having a great May so far and you're able to get outside, get that sunshine, get that natural vitamin D. Oh, it's so good for us. I know I am dusting off my ruck and getting ready to start rucking more outside again. I love it so much. It's so funny. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day. You know, all winter I was doing cold plunges in our actual pool. It was freezing. It was invigorating. It was so good for me, but I don't want to go for a walk in the cold because it's too cold. (laughs) But now that it's getting warmer outside, I do want to get outside and get that habit of walking back under my belt because it's so good for my mental health and physical health, of course, as well. So today I really wanted to dig deep into lifting weights and eating protein, ladies, and really why that's important for us, not just now, but into the future. You know, with some of the clients I've been talking to going through the 21-day challenge, um, I've had a couple of one-on-one clients this past month as well, we are really leaning into uncovering that diet culture mentality and why we feel that we have to work out super, super hard, doing all the cardio, being like little cardio bunnies and restricting ourselves. That is just diet culture BS, in my opinion. And those are a few of the challenges, you know, we um, habit hack our way through our, our accelerators as well. But even myself, like my mindset around my body and movement, you know, it's taken a really long way to flip the switch from a bad habit of, you know, tearing apart myself. You know, last week I talked about how I still struggle with body confidence and my own insecurities and I have to have it hack my way out of there. And I think for a lot of us ladies, there's a lot of factors that allow us to have this bad habit of not feeling confident about ourselves and then using movement or restriction as a way to punish our bodies in order to get to like the skinniest version of ourselves, which In all honesty, it's just a bad habit and a mentality we have to flip the script around. Um, And speaking of bad habits, our next monthly workshop is coming up on Wednesday the 17th at 12 p.m. Eastern. It is the Breaking Bad Habits Workshop. Not Breaking Bad, like the show. (laughs) I keep thinking of that. My husband even sent me a funny meme about it. It was so funny. But we do a monthly workshop every month hence the monthly workshop. It's a $5 workshop just to give you that extra accountability. But in this workshop, we're going to learn how to identify our bad habits. So maybe for you, it's, you know, body confidence and not talking very nice about yourself. Maybe it is a diet culture mentality. And really just understanding those bad habits. What are the triggers that lead us into that and how we can you know, dig deep into how this makes us feel and how we can replace that habit with a healthier habit. And bonus with every workshop, there is a free download included from the shop. This month it is a bad habit tracker to help you track those triggers. So um, make sure to sign up bit.ly slash breaking bad habits. Regardless if you can come live or not, you'll get the replay and the download to hold on to for life. After the workshop airs, it does go up to $17. So every month there's a new theme. There's previous workshops available in the shop as well. It's all linked in the show notes for you, friends. So I have personally been really focused on weight training since the beginning of the year. You know, sometimes um, 
as fitness professionals, sometimes we find ourselves so busy like writing workouts, conducting workouts, talking to clients. It's hard to make a habit of taking care of ourselves and getting like a consistent routine to stick with. And for me, weight training has always been something that I wanted to dig deeper into and I have been since January writing my own programming. Um, and I'm really starting to see the fruits of my labor. And I think that's kind of why I've never really been consistent with weight training because I want to see <laughs> results fast. And I know I got to walk the walk and talk the talk. And for me, it was about being patient and staying consistent with it. And I'm finally starting to see the results of that. And in order to be able to see that results, I'm eating more protein, right? And we have a hack protein and specific, specifically inside of the Food Freedom Accelerator, which um, speaking of that, I recently have been re-recording and just kind of adjusting a couple of those modules um, because I'm going to move that private podcast feed if you do the bundle to a new platform to make it easier to access and just kind of reworking a couple of little things inside of the accelerator is based just on what client feedback has been so far. So I love it. So I thought it was timely to really bring on another expert to help us break down really why we as women need to lift weights and grow our muscles, fuel those muscles with protein and actually change the way we feel about ourselves, sculpting out our bodies and feeling strong from the inside out. So today we're talking with Ashley Randall. She's a 15-year expert in training and development, specially, specializing in working with women to achieve both mental and physical strength. Yes, so she's the perfect person to talk to us about this today. So as a trainer, Ashley teaches her clients to become the CEO of her own their own lives. And with her bo Body Take Back program, she has developed a proven system to help women achieve their fitness and health goals and maintain them long term. Yes, yes, and yes. So in addition to her coaching, she's also the host of the Smash Talk po podcast, which I was just on recently talking about what else? Atomic Habits for Women. And she has weekly episodes featuring insightful and impactful conversations. So I'll make sure to link everything about Ashley in the show notes, but get a pen and paper handy. Have an open mind, an open heart, ready to debunk diet culture mentality and learn how to lift heavy, eat your protein, and... <laughs> <laughs> um, feed your booty, which make sure you stick around towards the end of the episode because you'll know what I mean. I love this conversation so much. I'll talk to you at the end. We'll share those three takeaways for you. All right, gang. Thank you again so much for tuning in to Self Transformed. I am so excited to dig into this topic today. I know you all will be excited to learn from our guest today. Ashley Randall is with us today. Ashley, thanks so much for coming on the show. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Same. Okay, let's get into it. So the first question I ask every guest is what comes to mind when you hear the phrase self-transformed? Ooh, self-transformed. Um, I think when I first think of that, I think of being able to take a look at your inner self and kind of do a little bit of an inventory and think of like, what do you think or maybe want to change? So not so much of what maybe others have, you know, told or asked of you, but really when you look inside, like, what is it that you want to change and then how, and what does that look like for you? Yeah. I love doing an inventory on yourself, but sometimes we got to drown out everything else to be able to hear that. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, for sure. Love that. Well, let's talk a little bit about you before we dig into all the juiciness we're going to talk about today. Tell us a little bit about you, what you do, kind of your own transformation journey that led you to really who you are and what you do today. Yeah, totally. So I am a health and fitness coach for females and I have been in this space for, sometimes I don't like saying it's been so long, <laughs> um, but I've been in it for over 15 years, closer to like 17 or 18 actually. And I studied kinesiology while I was at San Diego State. Um, which is the study of the human body and like how it works. Uh, and I was very intrigued by that. I've always been much, very much like a hands-on person. So when I realized that I could study something that I could actually apply to myself and like physically touch and see, and also watch transform, that was really cool for me. And so I just became really submerged in the wellness space in helping women, you know, feel better about themselves, whether that's you know, mindset and confidence, whether that's 
physically, you know, transforming and changing the way they look, whether that's educating them on the food that they eat so they can feel good, you know, from the inside out, all spectrums have really been a true passion of mine. And I have definitely experienced, you know, just like any of us, those struggles, those hardships. And I think that knowing that you can always take a step back and pour into you, no matter what kind of chaos is going around, is a very secure and like confident feeling. You know, the world could be on fire around you, but if it's like, okay, I can still, you know, be in control of what I'm eating, or I can still be in control of how I move my body or the thoughts that I think, I think it kind of helps to ground us a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up those three areas because we talk a lot about just like our basic fundamental needs, you know, just like movement, mindset and food freedom. And like you said, when the whole world feels so chaotic, you can actually take a little charge and a little control in your own life in those three areas. But I feel like sometimes those three areas feel very confusing or out of control either, or they're at different times. One may feel like you're in the flow doing really great movement, but then food is just like, I'm all over the place and I'm not (laughs) fueling myself right the way I want to. Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. It can be, it can be a lot, but I think when you find what works for you, you know, that's one thing that I really work with my ladies on is just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So what can we find that's going to work for you when the chaos happens? And what can you kind of tie yourself to and hold on to when that happens so that you aren't trying to follow someone else's path when life gets crazy? I mean, that's for sure a sign of failure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so much advice out there and even like, you know, fitness professionals, you know, a lot of times I feel like we're in the area where like, this is just an unconscious behavior. I do. It's part of like my self care. I do it. And some people are just like, I know I need to work out, but I don't like to work out like, or maybe it hurts to work out. So I think you have to come from a place of where we're meeting people where they're at and help happy, helping them adapt to where they're at versus being like, well, here's what's working for me, which a lot of us have the best of intentions or even like a girlfriend for that matter. But there's just so much out there so much. Yes. It can be overwhelming for sure. Yeah. Well, I really want to dig deep into strength training today. This is something I'm digging in really deep this year, as far as like my own training goes. And I work with a lot of women as well, where I am like, pick up some heavier weights, let's (laughs) get stronger from the inside out. And I always, every once in a while, I have someone be like, well, won't lifting weights make me like really big <laughs> and bulky? So let's talk, let's eliminate all these myths. Let's talk about strength training for women. And why do you feel like there's such a hesitation from women that just want to be like cardio junkies and trying to get them to transition to all the benefits of weight training? What is the hesitation there for most women? Oh man, that's I mean, we could do a whole podcast just on that one question. Honestly, it's crazy. But I think that truthfully, it is just so much of a societal thing. I think for generations, we have been told that, you know, I'm sure most of our parents, especially, you know, our moms were told that we're told, you know, do jazzercise, um, you know, go for walks, you know, wear ankle weights, you know, don't, you know, don't work out like three and five pound weights, like that's enough for women. And so when you come from that as your kind of background, and then you don't see your mom, or your grandma working out or lifting weights. And then now all of a sudden you're being told this thing. It is a very confusing thing because we as humans, like that's one of the things that I really try to focus on is, you know, I always, I always tell my clients kind of this tagline of like, it's more than chicken and push-ups because anyone, you know, can tell you to just eat some chicken and do some push-ups, but it's so much more than that. And when we really break it down, it's like, we have to think about what have we seen for decades? What has been modeled to us? What has been said to us? Um, You know, just like in a relationship, you know, if you see a healthy, loving relationship with your parents, then that's kind of your standard. And same thing with your health. If you've never seen, you know, your mother or your grandmother or your aunt or any female really in your life, prioritize like lifting weights and going to the gym it's a really hard thing for our brains to, to comprehend and to believe that that's what we should be doing. 
And so that alone on like the psychological standpoint, like that's why it's a hard shift for people to be like, wait, what? Like you want me to do this thing that I've never really seen modeled to me? Like, okay. And then on the complete opposite side of that, we have the social aspect where again, all the magazines, you know, in the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, you know, was like super skinny, supermodels. you know, everything was really, really thin. It wasn't really until the two thousands, even the late two thousands that people really started talking about, you know, females lifting weights and stuff like that. So it is still a relatively new topic, I guess, if you will, for, for women to really identify as, and I think in the past, unfortunately, the women that did lift weights, I say with quotes, um, I think they were the bodybuilder types. So it was like you either had the skinny jazzercise, wear the ankle weights, or females that you know were the reference point were female bodybuilders. There really wasn't an in-between. So I think that's where that long time stigma has been tied to of like, well, if I lift weights, I'm going to look like her. And I don't know if I want to look like that. And it's like, yeah, but there's so much in between that can happen. And, you know, (laughs) one of the things that I have said before uh, many times is it's, and it's kind of a blunt statement, but it's almost an insult to the bodybuilders to think for you or for someone to say that, oh, if I lift weights, I'm going to get big and bulky because those women or men who, who work really, really hard to look like that, like they work so hard to look like that. They eat a ton of food, they sleep, they work out really, really religiously and regimented. So for us, to assume that like, oh, if I lift weights heavy, I'm going to look like that. It's like, actually, that takes so much work to look like that. You would be lucky to ever do that. And, and so don't, don't think that, you know, lifting weights a a few times or for a few years is going to yield those results. It's a true, true lifestyle in order to, to get that physique. And if you don't want it, it's, easier to not achieve it than to achieve it. Right. Totally. Yeah. I was just having a conversation with my mom the other day. She's almost 70 and I'm, and she had like a bone density test and her mom had really bad arthritis and she's like, Oh, I'm just feeling it now. And I'm like, mom, like, I feel like every month I have a conversation with her. I'm like, here's like a small set of weights. Here's some easy yes. like, strength training you can do at home. I don't think you realize like how great this will be for you long-term And it's not just about like your actual physique, but I think it's also about functional fitness. Like, Hey, being able to get off the floor and play with your grandkids, be able to stand up without aches and pains. And there's so many benefits to strength training. Can you kind of um, hit on that a little bit for us, Ashley? Like what are some of the actual benefits of just everyday strength training for the everyday woman? Okay, I know you've felt this way before too. You start a new healthy habit routine and you find a good flow, but then life gets in the way and you find yourself in a new season of life and that healthy habit routine isn't working now. Uh, Instead of just giving up, come take my free masterclass, The Healthy Habit Reset. You will learn the simple five-step habit change method I only share in the masterclass where I take the overwhelm and confusion out of health and teach you how to reset your habits whatever season of life you are in. Okay, and I know what you're thinking. How long is this going to take? I know your time is precious, so the masterclass is broken up into three 15 to 20 minute modules you can seriously watch while you're just folding your laundry and includes a workbook to help you take action so it won't take up a ton of your time check it out for free and let me know what you think at bit.ly slash free reset masterclass i'll see you inside of the reset okie dokie let's get back to the show oh man again the list (laughs) the list is so long um i mean for one we'll we'll just kind of go back to what you had just said about your mom even is It's hard, I think, for a lot of women to put themselves in that place of, you know, being 60, 70, 80 um, and thinking about that now when we're in our 20s, 30s and 40s. But that is one of the biggest benefits truly is being able to have a bone density that will carry you through, you know, decades of life 
a strong structure, you know, muscular and skeletally that will help you have good posture, help alleviate back problems, um, let, you know, hip problems, all of that. So I, I really truly think that that is one of the best benefits. Again, I know that it's hard for us women sometimes to, to be concerned with that. Like, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to be like when I'm 70, but I always try to equate ourselves to like a house. And if you put a house together real shitty and you just throw it together or you neglect it, eventually you're going to spend thousands and hundreds and thousands of dollars repairing the roof and wishing that you had done a better job with this and wishing that you hadn't done, you know, the cheap route on that. And that's really how our body is, is if you take the time to build the structure now to lift the weights, to get a good core, doesn't mean you have to have a six pack, but have a good solid core, have some good solid legs. Again, it doesn't mean you have to have quad and hamstring definition, but having some strong legs, some strong glutes, glutes are one of the number one things that help with low back problems. So if you're experiencing low back problems, maybe you need to strengthen your glutes. So those are to me, some of the benefits. Yes, of course we can go on and on about like the aesthetics benefits, like who doesn't want to, you know, look great in their jeans or in their bathing suit or have their shoulders, you know, look great in a tank top, but it's about what are we doing now so that when we are 60, 70, we're not dealing with chronic issues. We're not constantly repairing the roof and constantly having to be on medication or, you know, see a chiropractor or whatever. It's like, Hey, I took the time and I built a really good house and yeah, it's probably going to have some weathering and some aging, but it's not going to weather and age the way that it would if it was never built strong and solid. Mm -hmm. I love that analogy so much. Yeah. It could all just crumble down pretty, pretty yes. easy yes. over time. Like, and it's like one, what it's like in your house, like one, one problem starts and like you have another one, then you have another one, then you have another yes. one. Right. Yes. What are, what are some of like, maybe not the physical, but maybe more so like mental benefits of strength training. The mental benefits I think are, um, they can rival, honestly, the, the physical. I, I, I really think, um, I think for a lot of women, the physical will kind of just talk more from the aesthetic standpoint, the physical can sometimes seem to take a long time or maybe longer than you would like, but the mental benefits I think can be instant. I mean, you can go to the gym and you can complete a workout and it can instantly boost your mood one, just based on, you know, the serotonin and the endorphins that are flowing through your body. But knowing that you went in and you accomplished something hard, something scary, maybe you picked up, you know, five pounds heavier than you normally picked up, like that is building the truest self-confidence that nobody can take away from you. And again, it's, it's also a level of self-discipline. So let's, you know, let's just say that you normally do 10 pound bicep curls and you are like, okay. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to pick up the 15 pounds today. Just again, just that confidence that you have instilled within your own action, it speaks volumes. And then you're like, oh, yesterday I was at the gym and I picked up those 15 pounds and like, I actually did it. Like, that's awesome. That level of confidence can pour into so many areas. I have had clients come back and tell me that after working with me, you know, for 12 weeks that they have asked for a raise at work that they've had, you know, hard conversations maybe with their partner, um, that they maybe have thrown their name in the hat for a project or a promotion or something at the office because just because lifting weights and doing maybe something hard and scary and then succeeding in it has built the confidence. So I really think like the mental is almost more exciting sometimes than the physical. Yeah. I mean, it's totally being stronger from the inside out. Like it's, 100%. it's such a high for, for yes. sure, for sure, <laughs> yes. for sure. Yes. 
So now for a, a, someone listening and they're like, okay, okay, I know strength training is <laughs> important. Okay. But what if they're like, I really enjoy my Peloton or I really enjoy running or, you know, it's a social thing for them. You know, I used to run a couple of years ago just to hang out with <laughs> other like-minded women and drink yeah. coffee together afterwards. What is a good, I know it, it's going to vary person to person, but if someone's thinking, okay, how can I make this work with a busy schedule where I'm like, okay, how can I divide up strength training cardio throughout the week without it feeling like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. Great question. Uh, I'm going to do a little shameless plug here. And I definitely would say, get yourself into a program. I love what you said about the running and the community, because I do think that that's one aspect that can be a little intimidating is you're going to the gym, maybe you're not comfortable in there yet. And so you feel very alone. And to your point, maybe the Peloton or the spin class or the running group feels safe. You know, you're in this group, you have this connection. There is so many opportunities out there to still experience that in the strength training or in the workout area. Um, and, you know, my program is all online, but we meet twice a week on a Zoom call where you get to connect. So we're not working out together, but you get to connect with exactly the same like-minded women that are going through the same life transformations and physical transformations as you, and you still have that connection. And in the program, I've developed all of the workouts to be less than 45 minutes. And they come with a video of me, you know, demonstrating and doing the workouts. So I think it's a common thing to feel a little bit nervous. Um, it's a common thing. I mean, gosh, I've been doing this for again, 15, 16 years. And I still, I mean, I just relocated here to a new part of Colorado and I went into the 24 hour fitness for the first time. And I was like, I felt like everyone knew that I was new, but I'm sure they didn't. I'm sure they're just like doing their own thing because we're all so consumed with ourselves. And right. so I was like, oh, are they going to know like, oh my gosh, that's that girl's first time here. And I'm a person who, you know, who's very confident in the gym. So I do get that aspect of maybe it being a little overwhelming or intimidating. I would say get into a program. Maybe if you are able to even invest in a trainer, whether it be online and you do a program or in person and you, even if it's only, you know, four sessions and you see a trainer and they're like, Hey, this is how you use this equipment. You know, one day a week, you should do lower body one day a week. You should do upper body. And if you want to keep running, go ahead. And as you get comfortable, you'll then maybe say, Hey, you know, I'm going to go in and do my own leg workout and I'm going to, you know, do this and you'll build that. But it always, you know, you can always do both. I always tell people you can always, you know, you can still do yoga, you can still run, you could still take kickboxing, but the actual strength training is what our structure, like skeletally, we need, especially as females. Yeah. Well, I think people get bored too. I know when we're strength training, we want to stick to a program and, you know, be able to see results and not be you know, I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do this. Now I'm right. going to do this. Cause then we won't see those results. Right. But I think it's good. Like you said, getting yourself around other people yeah. also just doing something fun to whether like, even if you just go to like a hip hop class or something right. just for fun and community, that's so, so great. Cause you know, we're training for life. We're not just training for, you know, to look a certain exactly. way. That's part of it, but that's not the whole thing. Now right. if ladies are listening and they're like, okay, I'm going to, you know, get a coach like Ashley. I'm going to start, you know, going to a, the gym, this and that. Now our nutrition plays a big role in building that muscle. And I see so many videos on social and I know personally what I do, but if someone's listening like, okay, now I know I need to up my protein game. Yes. What is your suggestion or opinion on that? Yes. My opinion is for sure. Protein is so important for females. It helps balance our hormones. It helps us to burn fat. It helps to keep the muscle that we have healthy and strong. So the way I'll just kind of touch on this real quick. So hopefully it kind of makes sense to um, everyone listening. But if you think about muscle and fat, you know, fat just sits there. It doesn't need oxygen. It doesn't need blood. It doesn't need anything. It just sits there. So therefore, if it's when it's on your body, it doesn't require any energy, AKA blood 
you know, fluid, all of that. So it's just there. When you have muscle, it requires a lot. I always tell people like, muscle is expensive real estate. It costs a lot of money, you know, to have muscle. And so when you have that muscle, it, again, you need blood, you need oxygen, you need food, you need glycogen, you need everything going to that muscle. And what all of those things I just listed, what those equate to are, is energy, is calories burned, is your body having to work to keep that muscle alive, aka, that's why people say like, you know, when you have more muscle, you burn more calories at rest, because again, it's expensive, you know, to keep all of this going, when you're sleeping, your body's working versus if it's all fat, it's like, it's just there. The fat doesn't eat anything. It's just, it just sits there. So protein, the role that protein plays in that again, is keeping that muscle alive, keeping it healthy, keeping it strong, not what, what your body will end up doing is it will either lose its muscle, which will happen over time, or in the immediate moment, it pulls from other areas of your body to keep that muscle alive. And so then you're really depleted because it's like, Hey, you know, Emily, like I got to run downstairs really quick. Well, all the muscles that it takes to run downstairs, if your body doesn't have the protein or the food that it needs to keep those muscles alive, it's now immediately pulling from other areas of your body to find that energy. And as much as we would like <laughs> fat again, can't be that energy source. So we have to have the protein stores. So I think what I would give, um, not to hopefully overwhelm everybody, but I think what I would have said to anyone who is starting their journey is something so simple with nutrition is just start to make sure you're getting a hundred grams of protein a day. And that is so simple, not maybe to do, but it's simple to track. You can write it on a piece of paper. You can use a tracking app, but that alone is like, it should be the bare minimum for every female, like the bare minimum. And once you start to look at that and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm only getting 70 grams. Like, okay, where can we start? You know, again, where can we start to increase this? Uh, and the more the protein that you're able to increase, the more lean muscle you'll have and the more energy system you'll be burning to, to keep that lean, you know, structure. Yeah. I mean, prioritizing protein is where it's at. And I feel like when you really like, okay, maybe I should look into this every single time the women are like, wow, I'm not getting enough protein. They're yeah. total, they're total, yeah. we're, we've all been there. We've all oh, been yeah. hundred grams is such a great starting point. And that's going to really help keep that muscle too. Cause when you are working out, you know, if you do get into that fat load blast zone, you also want to keep that muscle though at the yes. same time, right? You don't want to lose that muscle mass that you're working so hard to build. Yes. Yes. A perfect example that I'll give you that I, you know, say to my clients all the time is, and, and it's a little graphic maybe, but you know, I think like when women lose weight, usually most women, our boobs get smaller first and everyone's like, every oh, time. Every my time. boobs are getting so every small. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. The, the reason that that's happening is that is a perfect example of pure fat. And so your body's going to go there and that's just going to go first. So to your point is if you don't have muscle there and you start to lose that, then there's not going to be anything left. So we'll use the flip side of that, like our butts, you know, people are like, Oh, I don't want to lose my butt. Well, if your butt is pure fat, it's going to go away. But if you have you taken your, I mean, taken, if you've eaten enough protein, if you have lifted enough weights to have that butt be muscle, then like you said, when you are in that fat burning phase and the fat goes away, the butt is still going to be there because the butt is actually muscle. And so those are two perfect examples, like boobs, pure fat, but can definitely be almost solid muscle in theory, which one is going to leave a lot faster when you lose weight. Like clearly the one that's pure fat, but if you've fed your butt, no pun intended, and you've <laughs> you know eaten enough protein and you've worked out those glutes, well, then it's going to stay there. It's not going to just fall into the back of your legs because there's going to be actual muscle. So yeah, the hundred grams is, it's not always the easiest. I mean, I've had clients come to me 
the first week I, I suggest all my clients just don't change anything. Just start writing down what you're eating and let's just see where you're at. And I mean, I've had ladies come to me before that are like, oh, I'm at like 53 grams. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, more and, yeah. And you notice like your skin looks better. You have more collagen, like your mm-hmm. mood is better. You're more stable. Like there's so many more benefits, sure. but yeah, the hundred grams is like, that's the, it's the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah. That's so simple. That's really, really a simple, simple starting point. And I love the boobs and butt analogy. Cause I know every woman listening right now is going, <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, yes. we're all nodding our heads. Yes. Like, yes. Yes, that makes sense. So feed your butt. If your boobs go away, it's fine. <laughs> Just yes. wear a bra. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love this so much. I hope the woman listening today feels, you know, not intimidated by going to the gym or enrolling in like an online program and having some free weights at home and lifting and doing it from a place of self-love and self-care for themselves and getting stronger from the inside out. There's so many benefits to it, like you already mentioned. And I hope everyone feels inspired today to go pick up some weights, eat that protein and just have fun with it. Just have fun with it. it. That's the biggest thing is like, exactly. Just have fun with it. And I, I, you know, a lot of women get nervous about getting injured. Um, And that's something, you know, that I think having a coach will help you where whatever virtually or in person, but yeah, just have fun with it. Just be smart, have fun with it. And we are such a lucky specimen that we can't actually change the way we look, you know, like if you want a bigger, butt, you can work out and build it. You know, if you want to have a tinier waist or more defined arms, like you can do that. Like, that's really kind of cool that you can change your shape if you want to. So yeah, yeah, just have fun with it. I love it so much. Well, Ashley, again, thank you so much for this conversation. I could talk to you forever. (laughs) Where can everyone connect with you and find out more about you and what you do? So the best place to connect with me is definitely going to be Instagram. um, And that is going to be at Ashley Randall fit. So super simple, Ashley Randall fit. Um, and then you can also check out my website as well, which is ashleyrandallfitness.com. So I keep it real easy for you, but Instagram is where I share most of my stuff. Um, so yeah, hop in there, check out, um, anything. And if you guys ever have questions, I, you know, I'd love to connect with you guys. So feel free to shoot me a DM or join the list and get on the newsletter, anything like that. Great. And we'll make sure to, of course, list all of that in the show notes. So Ashley, thank you so much for this conversation. I so appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Have a good day. Friends, didn't you love this conversation? I loved it so much. I so wholeheartedly believe in lifting weights, not just to change the shape of your body, but really as a form of functional fitness and to be able to see those long-term benefits, not just now into the future, it is a win, win, win. So let's talk about our three biggest takeaways of this conversation with Ashley Randall. So number one, kind of what I just alluded to, we need to view working out as functional fitness. So it's not just your physique we're building, it's long-term health. We're training for life, right? That's how I see my training every day. I'm like, I am training for life. But there's such a hesitation to lift weights from women, right? Like Ashley mentioned, we want to do the jazzercise, you know, we want to think of being super skinny, or we see lifting as we think, we think of big bodybuilders, which... There's no in between, but imagine this. There is, there is. So what we have really seen from decades is just this diet culture mentality, which we debunk in all of my accelerators, especially the movement and the food freedom one. But there's that psychological aspect we have to first work through, like really digging deep into like, okay, why haven't I lift weights? What is my mentality around that? But also the social aspect, like Ashley pointed out as well. What you've been seeing on social media, magazines, there's been a very big focus on being as skinny as possible. And I feel like there's been a shift, but this doesn't happen overnight. So really digging deep into how you see fitness, how you see movement, your mentality around that and flipping the script. Okay, next biggest takeaway is the actual benefits of strength training, right? We were talking about bone density, right? Like I said, look to your mother, your grandmother, you know, 
sometimes we have some genetics working against us and being able to lift heavy, building that bone density. So, you know, like she said, building a structure now. So a strong core, legs, glutes, lifting now for the future, right? Having that strong foundation. But also, the mental benefits are almost instant. So that's great. Like I said, I've been working out since January, lifting consistently, changing it up about every six to eight weeks and lifting heavier as I'm moving along. But so that's been that's been like, you know, the first few months of the year, right? Or the first quarter of the year, really. Now, <laughs> but when I see the mental benefits, it's instant, right? It's like, oh, you got those happy hormones going. That builds confidence. You're able to lift a little heavier. You're like, gosh, what else I can do? right? If you're kind of like, okay, this is great. I don't know where to start, or I still want to incorporate some cardio, which I personally like to do cardio as well, just because like, I like riding my Peloton. I like walking outside. I like, you know, doing Orange Theory classes just to mix it up. If you're looking for a free resource, I have a free three-day at-home workout program. It's an upper body, lower body, and simple hit workout. Anyone can do it. I provide modifications. It's at bit.ly slash at-home workout freebie. Now, as we're starting to like change our mindset, we're like, okay, I'm in it for the physical and mental benefits of strength training. We have to think now, okay, nutrition plays a big role in strength training. Like Ashley said, protein is king, okay? It's not just about building and maintaining that muscle and fueling your muscles. It's about balancing your hormones. Help more muscle burns fat and keeping the muscles we have, right? <laughs> I love this so much. So think of it this way. You don't want your boobs to get smaller. You don't want to have that flat pancake butt. So, you know, if you are working out and you're like, oh my gosh, I always have this flat pancake butt and I just want a little bit of muscle back there, you got to feed your butt. <laughs> just like Ashley mentioned. I know for me, whenever I lose weight, it always is in my chest, my boobs to start, right? And I know you're listening to this and you are nodding your head too. Let me know on our Instagram stories because Ashley and I had a big laugh about this. And I was actually going to title this podcast like Feed Your Butt, but I was like, no one's going to understand unless they listen to this. But have fun with this, right? Have so much fun. Thinking about you know, you're not just eating protein because you're like, I want to be skinny. It's like, no, I want to eat protein to help maintain my muscle while I'm maybe perhaps burning fat and making this a lifestyle shift, not just for now, but in the future. I don't know about you, but I want to be like a sassy grandma someday, being able to take my grandkids on adventures. And when my kids move out someday, my husband and I have big plans to really just travel with our dog or dogs and just go have fun. Right? So in order to do that, though, you have to have your health. If you don't have your health, a lot of other things in life aren't going to matter because you're not going to be able to do it. Right? So let's see this as long-term training for life, functional fitness, lift heavy, fuel your muscles, and let's go. Ashley, thank you so much again for this conversation. I loved it so much. Friends, you can find everything Ashley Randall it linked in the show notes for you. And again, join us for that Bad Habits Workshop, Breaking Bad Habits Workshop on the 17th at 12 p.m. Eastern Live. Watch it live or catch the replay. I am so pumped for this conversation. I hope you really take it to heart. And I can't wait to see the transformation that happens for you from the inside out. Let's get stronger, friends. Hey, girl, real quick before you go, did you know I have a secret podcast where I talk all about why most habit strategies don't work for us women? Spoiler alert, it's not our fault. <laughs> Visit bit.ly slash Atomic Habits for Women. It's linked in the show notes to access my secret podcast series and have your biggest aha moment about why and how women have to do habits differently. And if you love the podcast, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can find the show. Love and appreciate you, friend. We'll see you next time.